All right, so we have a pretty interesting problem here uh, where we're going to be modeling a proton beam using uh, volume and surface current densities, J and K, respectively. J is going to be our volume cur uh, current density, and K is going to be our surface current density. And we're going to use these to uh, not only model our total current, but also uh, a couple of constants. Let's get into the nitty-gritty details of the problem and get started. So what we're given here is we're given that we're doing an experiment where we have a proton beam that can be modeled as a cylinder, okay? So we just got a beam, we can model it as a cylinder, and that proton beam runs at 3.31 times 10 to the 18 protons per second. Uh, we have this beam shooting at a, a target, and for simplicity's sake, we can assume there's going to be no uh, reflection or anything like that. Um, and the spot it makes on the target is 1.25 micrometers. So that's sort of a way that we're going to be able to um, measure the radius of this thing. And so in the first part of this problem, we're going to find the current using the uh, surface current or not the surface current density, I'm sorry, the volume current density model, uh, J is equal to J naught, S divided by R, where J naught is a constant. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, the J naught constant, because that way, uh, since J naught is a constant, uh, if we rerun this experiment and we measure a radius, we can get our uh, current, or if we know what current we're putting into it, we know what radius size we can expect to get. Um, and then the second part of this is we're going to approximate the beam to be a uniform surface current density, um, or to have a uniform surface current density. And uh, we're going to find and calculate a value doing that. So let's get started. So let's start with what we're given. Uh, which is that uh, J is equal to J naught S divided by R. Okay, now obviously uh, this is a vector. This is, you know, doesn't have a direction on it yet, so it's kind of kind of bad math for the time being, but we can just go with it for, the, for right now. Um, we're assuming that we have a cylinder, then that we could approximate this cylinder. So let's say we have a cylinder long cylinder like this. This is our beam that we're modeling here and that our current is going to go in this direction. Um, that this proton beam is going in that direction. And uh, if we recall uh, our J vector or our uh, volume current density is given by uh, DI divide uh, D oh, not partial uh, DA uh, perpendicular. Okay, and we can write this in an integral form that might make life a little bit easier for us, which is that our current is equal to the integral of uh, j dot dA. Okay, uh, this is going to, of course, going to just give us the magnitude of the current. We can inspect this to figure out the direction the current's actually going in. Uh, so let's do that. Mm. So now it's just a matter of figuring out what dA is. And we know that dA has to run perpendicular per this guy right here. So if we think about a perfect perpendicular area to our current, well, I think a perfect perpendicular area would be a nice circular disk somewhere in here where we can approximate that as our, our, our dA. And so we know that that's going to be the area of a disk. The area of a disk goes as um, S dS d phi in cylindrical coordinates because cylindrical coordinates are going to be the easiest coordinates to use here. So that makes our total current I is equal to the integral 0 to 2 pi uh, 0 to r, r is just going to be our radius for the time being, or we're going to hold our, the variable of our radius to b, and we're going to uh, go uh, j naught s per r s d s uh, d phi. All right, now there's no phi dependence here, so the phi integral is pretty easy. We're just going to get an extra uh, 2 pi out here, and we can simplify this so that we end up getting the following. Uh, we're going to get 2 pi times integral 
0 to r of j naught s squared per r ds. Okay, um, now when we integrate all that out, we're going to get uh, 2 pi j naught s cubed per r, uh, 3r, I'm sorry, um, and evaluate that on bounds 0 to r. And when we do that, we're going to get 2 thirds um, pi j naught r squared. And so this right here is going to be our total current. Okay? And so that's really nice. We figured out our total current. That's fantastic. But we want to figure out what j naught is. We want to figure out what that constant is so that we only need to measure one thing and we can just calculate the other. And so to do that, we can just do some pretty basic algebra. And we can go and say that our i is equal to 2 thirds um, pi j naught uh, r squared. And we can just solve for this really quickly to get that j naught is equal to, whoops, um, to get that j naught is equal to uh, 3 i divided by 2 pi r squared. Okay, and now this is pretty simple because we're given, if you recall, we're given uh, this proton beam uh, that runs at 3.31 times 10 to the 18 protons per second, and we're given our radius also. But we need to consider the fact that a current, the units of current, is uh, coulombs per second. And so we know that protons have a uh, the opposite charge of the electrons, and so we can easily convert this proton beam into uh, coulombs per second, so we can get a current from this. So we can take our uh, 3.31 times 10 to the 18 uh, protons per second, and we can multiply that by the... Uh, charge of a proton, which is one point we're going to approximate is 1.6 uh, times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And when we do that, we get a current of 0 uh, 0.5296. And uh, on the next slide, I'm going to show you a cell a Mathematica cell uh, that calculated this. And then for J naught, we can basically just plug in everything that we know for J naught. So we can plug in this I we calculated, and then we can also plug in our 1.25 micrometers here to get that J naught is equal to uh, 3 uh, times 0 0.52 nine six amps uh, divided by two pi times the quantity one point two five times ten to the minus six meters and we can calculate this and when we do that we end up getting one point six one eight times ten to the uh, eleven uh, amps per meter squared if we go over to this next page, you can see that this cell calculates our current, and this cell, uh, this Mathematica cell, calculates our J naught values. You can see I, I rounded with a couple of sig figs, but uh, uh, this may be overkill, but just for simplicity's sake, this is how I ended up calculating those results. Okay, so now on to part two. Part two wants us to approximate this proton beam as a uniform, uh, or as having a uniform surface current density. If we recall uh, the definition of our surface current density, K, it's uh, dI divided d 
L perpendicular. Okay, we can really simply write that in a differential form of that our current is equal to the integral of k dot dl. Okay, but really we don't need that. Okay, we don't we don't even really need that. We know that we can consider di as our just just our normal current i, so we can just call that i, and we know that dl is just going to be the circumference of the same region that we used over here. So now instead of having this area filled in using the area of a circle, whoops, we can just simply use a circular shell or the circumference of a circle. And so we know that our DL is just going to be going to need to be the circumference of a circle. So um, we can say that dl perpendicular is just going to be 2 pi r so uh, our the magnitude here of our surface current density is equal to uh, i divided by 2 pi r which is really just equal to 0 0.5296 amps divided by 2 pi times 1.25 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And when we calculate that, you can see from this cell, we get the following as the magnitude of our surface current density. And again, we know it has to be pointing in the same direction as our current. We know where we're pointing this current already. So we don't necessarily care all that much about the directionality of this thing because we're setting up the experiment ourselves. We know which direction it's going in. So that'll do it for this problem. It's kind of an interesting one. This is kind of a, a nice little uh, practical uh, real-world example of where we, we might need to uh, model a or use a volume and surface current density.